There is a lot of confusion among Muslims regarding the context behind Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, ayah 1 to 5. Some Muslims said these ayahs are about Muhammad committing adultery with the slave called Maria Al-Qabtiya, which he received as a gift from the governor of Egypt. This means she was not made lawful for him because she was not captured as war booty or also known as what your right hand possesses. So Muhammad slept with Maria in the house and on the bed of his wife Hafsa while it was her day to be with Rasulullah. Other embarrassed Muslims said, well that version of the story cannot be true. These ayahs in Surah Al-Tahrim are not about Maria Al-Qabtiya and they said, the correct story is that our Prophet ate smelly honey. What? Yes, you heard it correctly, smelly honey. So his mouth started to smell like a sewer. And he asked Hafza to not tell Aisha, but Hafza could not keep this as a secret, but went to Aisha anyway and told her how bad Muhammad's breath was. So Muhammad forbade himself to eat smelly honey. Does this version of the story make any sense to you Muslims? This is embarrassing. Anyway, so Allah decided to send down these ayahs to warn his wives to stop bullying Muhammad, else Allah would divorce them and find his beloved prophet better wives than Aisha and Hafza. Wait, so Allah has nothing better to do but to send down revelation about Muhammad eating smelly honey? Hmm, really? <laughs> You gotta love how Muslims fabricate stories to duct tape and cover up the immoral behavior of their false prophet who committed adultery with a Coptic slave behind his wife's back. Now the reason why Muslims said that the other version of this story, Muhammad committing adultery with the Coptic slave Maria, is simply a lie because these embarrassed scholars said that Abdullah bin Shabib, who is in the chain of narration, was a known liar. But what they did not tell you that there are other chains that will actually confirm the story about the adultery of Muhammad. So this means that the chain of the hadith becomes disconnected if a person is known as a liar. And for that reason they said we Muslims have to reject the story and believe that the story is about the Prophet having a bad smell coming from his mouth to smelly honey. But is this truth or simply another fabrication to cover up the adultery of Muhammad with Maria Al-Qabtiya? In this video, we're going to refute the lies of these Muslims from their own Islamic books and show you how they hide that other necessary information that will rebuke their deception and mental gymnastics. I found an interesting comment from a Muslim who is confused about the story and is asking his sister Farida to clear up the story for him because he heard about the disrespectful story, i.e. Muhammad committing adultery with Maria Al-Qabtiya. So let me help this poor confused stone kisser and show him that the only correct version of this story is about Muhammad banging Maria Al-Qabtiya. So let us finally show you Muslim Sunni books to destroy their lies and make everything clear. Sunan al-Dara Qutni, volume 3 by Imam al-Dara Qutni, page 295. On this page we see three different chains. The first two chains do include Abdullah bin Shabib, who Muslims threw under the bus and called a liar. But there is a third chain in the bottom of the page, which is a connected chain and is Sahih. And we read that this Sahih chain of narration is found in Al-Mughni by Ibn Qudama, but also in Ibn Kathir's Tafsir, and last but not least, the earliest Mufassir, Ibn Jarir Al-Tabari, in his book, Jama' Bayan Fi Ta'wil Al-Quran. And as mentioned earlier, in Tafsir Ibn Kathir, for chapter 66, ayah 5, we can see that the same Sahih chain of narration is including, and it says here, وَهَادَ إِسْنَادْ صَحِيحٌ Did you catch it? To make it even more clear that the only correct version of the story is Muhammad banging the slave girl Maria Al-Qabtiya. We go to Sunan Al-Nasai, hadith number 3959. It was narrated from Anas that the messenger of Allah had a female slave, i.e. Maria Al-Qabtiya, with whom he had intercourse. But Aisha and Hafza would not leave him alone until he said that she was forbidden for him. Then Allah, the mighty and sublime, revealed, O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself 
that which Allah has allowed to you until the end of the verse. So as you see, this is a highly sahih hadith confirming that Muhammad has sexual intercourse with the slave behind his wife's back and he promised them that he would not sleep with Mari al-Qabti anymore. So you see, the only true story is Muhammad banging the slave girl, committing adultery in the process. So my Muslim friends, why do you claim that Muhammad is the perfect example to follow? Isn't that hypocrisy and a major contradiction? This is really embarrassing. As you see, without lies, Islam truly dies. My Muslim friends, keep fabricating lies about your prophet to hide these embarrassing details about his sex life.